one. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the Sports Medicine Broadcast, promoting your program to your student body. As we are doing this right now, my students are doing a scavenger hunt. So if you're you know, relatively new or listening to this relatively close to when it comes out, uh, you can search on Instagram, probably Twitter too, hashtag SAT scavenger hunt 2017. And you can see some of the pictures. And that's one of the ways that I'm promoting my program. But we'll talk more about that later. I've got what uh, probably anybody in this area would call the guru of promoting your program. Chris Shattuck is a guy that I've, I've looked up to as an athletic trainer. He's done a lot of really good things in our profession, in our area. And I appreciate all the professionalism and your willingness to be on the podcast, Chris. So thanks for being here again. And then Greg Gorig and Casey Loheed were recommended by Jamie Woodall. Jamie is the PR director for the NATA. She's the PR chairperson. And so if, if, Jamie is saying, hey, these people really know how to do public relations, then it's probably a really good recommendation. So Greg and Casey, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. Nice to be back. I am Jeremy Jackson, the host of the Sports Medicine Broadcast, and this one is slash student body. So sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash student body. Again, as it's being streamed live on Facebook, YouTube, if you have questions or comments, I will do my best to see them and ask these, these experts here while we have them. Okay. So we've talked about, I talked about a little bit about a promotion kind of thing that I'm doing. Um, and let's go ahead and start off with some of the bad stuff. So Chris, tell me about a, a deal that you did to promote your student program that just sucked. That just sucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, one time uh, we've had, uh, during National Athletic Training Month is when we do a lot of, a lot of events. Uh, one year we, I, I call different um lawmakers, our congressmen, our state representatives, uh, mayor, whoever will come out and do a proclamation for us. And one year I've, I got, I was uh, scrambling around. I, I, I sent it to many, pe many people because I don't know when they're going to, if they're going to return my emails or calls or not. And I got two emails back saying that I got our congressman and a state representative that also that wanted to come out and do a proclamation. So I had to find time. And the best time was a baseball softball game going on at the same time. Uh, I had our uh, state representative throughout the first pitch at the softball game, and I was going to have the uh, our congressman throughout the first pitch at the baseball game. And when and the congressman showed up, the, the, the state representative did good. He, he threw out the first pitch. Everybody cheered. There was a ton of people there. We go over to baseball. There's like one person in the stands, and I've got my congressman sitting there with me. I was like, man, what are we going to do? I, I feel bad for you. I know this, this is going to be a great photo op. Just, we won't show the, the stands <laughs> and they were okay with that. We did, we were hosting a soccer game, a playoff soccer game at the same time. The stands were packed. I said, why don't we try to go over there? I've called the coach. It's halftime. They'll let you do the proclamation there and we can introduce you. You can say whatever you want to say. So we're walking across the parking lot. The coach calls me say halftime's over. Sorry. So we go back to the baseball game. We get our photo op with an empty baseball stadium. So it was, that was probably a <laughs> failure. I felt so bad. And after that, I, I have not, I haven't asked for a proclamation from anybody. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I, I definitely understand the, you set stuff up and then like, it's kind of a big deal and then it just doesn't go well. Cause there's been plenty of times like on the podcast two weeks ago, I had an author on the show, but they, we couldn't get everything working. Couldn't get the technology. And it's like, I've scheduled this months in advance. I got all this stuff. I've been promoting it. And then it's just, I'm sitting here waiting for them to call and nothing worked out. So I definitely understand the, uh, the frustration there. Greg, Casey, what about something you guys have done that hasn't gone well? I have, I have one in particular. Casey may not say, may not agree with me, but you know, Casey likes to do the lock-ins oh, and gosh. you know, I'm, I'm kind of old Jeremy and, <laughs> That, you know, the two, three o'clock in the morning doesn't go well with me, but, you know, the kids love it. Uh, Casey, I think Casey likes yeah. to lock in. For me, I, it's just a little rough when it gets to three o'clock in the morning. So that's something that we do before football season starts up. We'll do like the week before, two days. We'll get all the student trainers together. We'll go over getting ready for, you know, that to start. But then we'll also do like team building stuff and it's, the students really like it because they have a field house all to their self and they get to run around. We'll do sardines and it's, it's a lot of fun. Normally 
you know, like I said, two, three in the morning and even the day after you're thinking, why did I do this? Never again. I'm never going to do the lock-in. But then we had it again for a second year this year. So I guess it's not that bad that girls like it enough. So. All right. So tell me a little bit more about that. I've actually considered doing that here uh, or even doing it like as a whole district. You know, we've talked about having like our own little, you, uh, you guys were talking about G hats or NTATs, the student athletic training workshop, but just having something kind of within our district where our kids get to meet each other and, and hang out and share their knowledge and skills and just do stuff, fun stuff. So tell me a little bit more about the, the lock-in and how that works for you guys. Um, for us, we have a report at like 7 p.m., I think. So we'll do 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. Um, we try to get all the housekeeping done first. So we don't have to worry about trying to go back to serious things later on. When it's early in the morning, nobody wants to do that. So um, we might do like packing fanny packs. We might do like a scavenger hunt for different first aid supplies. We'll just kind of go over the important stuff. Um, from there, uh, I just try to keep a schedule and a lot of backup plans to keep uh, people moving because so whenever you know, it gets to one to two in the morning that's when people want to lay down including me or I, Greg will disappear for a nap so um, I try to, I try to I it. it's true um, but yeah so I try to just I have a lot of I don't know just random things that I've kept over the years and I'd be I don't know I can share this with you later if you'd like um, we've done like water slides, we did a um, obstacle course uh, outside where uh, it just got really messy and dirty, and so ended up being everybody was uh, taking dunks in the ice baths to clean off, and of course that's fun, and um, so yeah, just try to. There's some games out there yeah. on the on the turf field. We turn the lights on at midnight or one in the morning, and you know kids would play, you know whether it be kickball or you know, just some some kind of team bonding uh, activities. Um, but yeah, this year, Casey had some great idea that we're going to do this <laughs> obstacle course. And the last part of the obstacle course, they had to oh, crawl gosh. through an open trash can, open cut trash bag. And inside that trash bag was mustard and ketchup and yeah. and yeah. I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm not doing yeah. that. Yeah. But uh, now is this oh, yeah. just your student athletic training aides, or are the is this everybody that wants to come out? No, these, these are the aides. ones, yeah. the ones that made the that made the cut. Yeah. All right, so talk a little bit more about how the obstacle course, or I mean the uh, the lock ins and those kind of things, how they have promoted your program to your students to your school. Uh, I think for us, um, we probably uh, I don't know. We like to build up our program and we want to make it enjoyable to our students because then they'll tell their friends and um, when we get new applicants to our program they're going to say like oh we've heard about you know what you've done and like the lock-in or we'll do um, like big sis little sis type things or um, so we try to do that I think it's more of just word of mouth um, that kind of works for us by doing those type of events. All right so they get to tell other people and it, and they're like, Oh yeah. Or the, you know, obviously everybody right now, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, whatever it is, whatever social media, there's sh Snapchat, they're sharing pictures and videos of, you know, this is going on and that. And so people see that and be like, Oh, that looks like so much fun. I, I want to be a, a part of that. Right. Yep. And of course we'll, um, like there's a game that we'll do every year just, uh, to try to get the, the student trainers to learn the coaches names. So we'll do like pictures and names and they have to like organize it on a wall. So we'll leave that up all year. And so when people walk in the training room, they'll start reading the facts about the coaches and they'll ask what it's from. And some kind of, I don't know, so that's kind of another nice thing as well. Um, so we try to leave that stuff up so that way people are asking about it whenever they come into the training room. See, I like that. I usually have, tell my kids, you know, hey, every time you go out to give water to a coach, you shake their hand and say, hey, I'm so-and-so, you know, hey, I'm, I'm destiny. Uh, and what's your name? So that way they're, they're introducing themselves and their coaches are just saying, Hey, water, water, water girl. You know, they, they say, Hey, you know, destiny come over here. And you know, these coaches end up having the kids in class and they see them year after year, that kind of thing. But some of them still don't know the coach's name. So that's one of the things that I've done, but having that, uh, not a scavenger hunt, but the, the fact finder or whatever it is, uh, right. whatever you call it, that, that's a pretty good idea. Maybe I'll have to, I'll have to think ahead of time to kind of get all those facts and then go from there. But it is. A, I mean, I can. I normally it takes me about a week. I'll just email coaches and ask them for like five interesting facts. I can take out some that may not 
be as interesting maybe or if they're having a hard time thinking of something so um we even had kids that are in rehab right now say hey do you know that coach so-and-so had a sister in the secret service and that it's kind of nice to to have that so (laughs) all right uh chris we want to start with something basic okay um what would you recommend I think my most basic thing, when we bring our students in at the beginning of the year, we go over some of our rules. Um, if w- one of our major things is uh, how you present yourself. So if you come in, we, we, we go over the rules. You have, you're going to have to wear this certain thing to practice or to games. Uh, you're going to have to act a certain way in the community, around the school, outside of athletic training, because you now are associated uh, with us, and we want you to uh, promote us. We've done, we've done a lot of things to raise our reputation. It takes just one person to do something stupid to bring you back down where it's going to take you several more years to build that back up. And we like that trust that the coaches have in us and our students. Uh, so you're going you're gonna to dress like we want you to. We have practice shorts they have to wear. Now, we're not, you know, sticklers on. We have shirts, practice shirts, but we still allow them to wear any school-colored shirt or school logo shirt as long as that's fine for practice and for games you're going to wear khaki pants you're going to look professional so i think that's where it starts and the most basic thing for us as far as promoting our program and promoting our students as professionals all right so that's something that seems very easy to overlook because we're thinking oh what can i do what can i reach out how can i you know buy teachers gifts or you know do things for the principal but the simplest thing is the reputation the standard that you're setting right there Right. Like you said, uh, I, I asked you one time, I was like, what do you, Chris, wear out to practices? And what did you tell me? Well, I, I change into shorts. I wear shorts to practice. But what kind of shorts? Uh, khaki shorts. You see? So there you go. You're, you're setting the standard there, right? I'll, usually I'm wearing gym shorts. I might be out there sweating or whatever. And again, that's my decision. But you're setting the standard of we are professional. This is what we look like. Right. And so you're, you're showing your kids in that hey, this is who we are. So the coaches, they speak well of your kids. The coaches think well. They tell their kids they speak well to other people. So I think that is the most basic thing that you could do, set the expectation from the beginning and keep it constant throughout the year, but maybe even one of the best. Right. Because it's not just some big gimmick, but it's... Super easy. And then we have kids that try to, you know, be out of dress, even even school dress code. They're going to have to be in school dress code. So we'll talk to them if we see that they're not, uh, if they don't correct their actions, we're going to get rid of them because we don't want them to bring us down as a whole. Uh, so we, we have pretty strict standards. So you're going to follow our rules or you're not going to be in our program. Good, good, solid recommendation. Greg, Casey, the most basic thing that you would recommend to some of us that are, are just getting into promoting our program. I think one of the biggest thing is just be consistent with your rules, you know, um, because what happens is that sometimes you may make a decision and then it may come back to, and kind of get it get you on, in the wrong place. But I think one thing we've learned is to be very consistent. Uh, that way the kids understand that when they do make a, a mistake, they know what that there's going to be some kind of consequence involved instead of I'll let you off the hook this time, whether it's for dress code violation or, you know, whatever it may be, being late or not calling in when there's, you know, for unexcused absence. But just being consistent because we have a we have a policy on when you make a mistake with depending on the severity you'll get a strike on it um kind of a lot of stuff that we took from jamie when we were talking and following that protocol has been been awesome as far as again as long as you're consistent with whatever the, the punishment is so along the same same lines if you set the the standard of the base then that's going to go further to promote your program to your student body, right. to your community, those kind of things. Right. right. A good example would be like for grades, you know, if, if you, if you fail for the six weeks, you'll get a strike. Um, those kind of options. And then if you get three strikes within the, the year, then you're going to have to sit out for the semester, the following year. So, um, and having that in writing is good for us too. So having a handbook and we, we revisit that every year. So, you know, some rules are made because of, what other people have done or, or mistakes other people have made, unfortunately. So we, uh, we like to go over that every year and make sure that there's nothing else that we need to add of do or do not do and um, get the students to look at that and sign off on it with their parents every year. Especially for social media, 
you know, that's changed obviously a lot lately in the last 10 years. <laughs> yeah. So I've got to probably add some stuff in our handbook about social media because yeah. whether you retweet it or you tweet it out, you know, and that's the thing is the retweets. There's things on there. You're like, why are you, why are you sending this stuff? We have to have conversations with our students. It's oh yes. Terrible. We had those conversations. But, yeah. uh, and then, I mean, last or a week or two ago, whatever it is, I talked to uh, Jeff Hop about HIPAA and FERPA and that kind of stuff. And, you know, as we're, setting the standard you don't want our kids to be the standard of gossip or information about a kid's injury or something like that or something that they overheard in the athletic training room or when they happen to peak at a physical so again setting those basic ground rules and then then continuing to be consistent and following up so good. i think the other thing is jeremy is to have you know be able to go over that information with the parents so they understand too yeah when when their child gets in, in trouble and why they're suspended for a game or whatever the fact is it's it's good to go over the rules and your policies of your program with the parents as well as the kids i agree and i, I don't know about you guys but when i have I have a parent meeting every year and the only mm -hmm. ones that show up are the freshman parents and then i don't ever see them again exactly. until yeah. they graduate so you're like exactly. a voluntary not a required parent meeting well, yeah it's just voluntary we're not going to require it and most of the parents i've got uh i've got a parent who had another daughter in our program now her, her her younger daughter's in it, so she she knows how we operate. So I won't ever see her. Every now and then, like we had, we were donating gifts for. Um, we adopted some kids for Christmas, so she she brings in a bunch of gifts and stuff. But I won't see her for the parent meeting for sure. Usually, yeah. none of them except for the <laughs> freshman parents. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, because we we tried that, and then there's part here. There's partly a, a language barrier. Some of the parents don't speak, and so then I'm I'm going over this stuff, but then the kids are like having to try and explain it and, and you know so I, I don't know i guess i just got lazy but this year harvey harvey kind of did a number at the beginning of the year so um the, i think it's definitely good to explain and set the expectation with the parents as well so all right chris what do you think has is the best thing that you've done and then we'll come back and just go over some more examples of stuff you've done i think the the best thing that that we've done um was a couple of years ago for National Athletic Training Month. Um, we wanted to. We wanted. To, we were, our goal had been to to win the, the National Athletic Training Month, the the PR award. And so we we're thinking outside the box. What can we do? What can we do? So I thought of an idea. Well, what if we put uh, our school is right in the flight path of Hobby Airport. Uh, so the planes fly right over our school. What if I just put a big giant billboard on the top of the school where people could read it? So I, we, we figured out we wanted to put the, I can't remember what the theme was for the year. I think we put safer sports uh, hashtag, or we put, no, we did safer sports, hashtag safer sports, and then at our Twitter handle for our, our athletic training program. And it was 17 sheets of plywood. And it, it stretched out far. I had, I had the art department paint them all black and then with white letters. And then you could see it from the sky. So people, we had a bunch, we have a few people, I don't know who they were, uh, joining our, our Twitter page. And uh, so we got some feedback from that. I had it on Google, Google Maps at one time. It was up there. And then right after March, I think the maintenance people took it down because the wind started to blow. I think those sheets of plywood started to move around a little bit. Uh, but I think that might have been the, the best thing in my mind that we, that we've done that we can reach more people mm -hmm. and during national athletic training month, I think the hash, the hashtag safer sports was, I don't know if we came up with that or if that was in ATAs, but I can't remember. Yeah, that was, that was a super cool idea. And I remember seeing pictures of like from an air, from an airplane or from an overhead view of the rooftop of Dawson high school. And that again, just a creative outside of the box, reach a broad audience. Very cool. And then people ask, what is that? And then you get to tell them or, you know, obviously you said your Twitter page it right. points so, them so they get to go back and look. And during March, every day during March, we, we posted, try to post something on Twitter uh, about athletic trainers. So people that didn't know, they, they could find out, you know, just, just, just people flying over. What is this? And then they write it down or check it later and they can find out what athletic trainers are or all, are all about. All right, Casey, what do you think is the, is your favorite thing or the best thing that y you have done? To promote your program well man i would have said the lock-in but <laughs> greg already dogged that so geez i don't know 
Are you going to have to help me out because you took my example? The lock-in was, <laughs> no, I would not say that. I personally, um, we've changed, uh, probably the last four years, we've gone to Google Docs with our interviews, or no, I'm sorry, our applications for our student trainers. Uh, before it was handwritten, they had to give it to the coordinator at the middle school and get it in our hands and go that direction. Same thing with the teacher recommendation letters or the teacher reference evaluations that we give our applicants. They had to do it on paper and get it in our box and, you know, they would say they turn it in, but now everything is on Google. So it's fantastic. It's a lot easier for the teachers. And it's a lot easier for the kids to apply to the program. Um, and everything is right there and there's no miscommunication on I've turned it in or I didn't turn in or, you know, so um, that's been great for us using Google. So how has moving Google, your application to Google helped promote your program to your school and your student body? Oh, yeah. That's a good question. That's a good question. I think for us, at least for um, maybe like just ease of application and making it available to the students, it's probably been great. But as far as promoting to the campus, that probably wouldn't be answer you're looking for. I don't know. I think for us, we just try to, I don't know. I don't know if there's one single event that we've done that's great. You know, I already said the lock-in, but uh, if Greg doesn't agree with me with that. But I think for us, we try to get our student trainers, student athletic trainers to be a part of the team. So whenever we have, we have like pop-up pep rallies where if a team makes it to playoffs, they get to walk the hallways and the band will follow them. And it's a pretty cool thing. So, um, we kind of make sure that our student athletic trainers are with the team anytime that they're represented. So they're, they're in the limelight or spotlight too. Um, I don't know. So I think it's kind of a nice thing for us that, that they're being recognized whenever our teams are being recognized as well. How many students do y'all have in your program? 14. 14. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have 19. And I think that's a lot. 14 would be a better manageable number for me. Oh, I love it. It's so great. We had up to 40 um, at Midlothian High School. 40? And what do you do with all those kids? And <laughs> as you can see, we have 14 now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will say it's, it's, uh, it's easier to manage, um, easier to stay in their business and keep them in line, uh, less stressful. Um, that's one thing we've done different. Uh, these years lately is is we really spend a lot of time um, in the evaluation process of our applicants. Um, we really feel like that you know the the harder we work in the spring with choosing our applicants, the easier it will be for us. Um, we can find a good group of students that can work together as one. How, how long has your school been open? Heritage has been open for three years. Okay. As far as uh, the high school is. As recognized as a high competition. school. Yeah. We've been, the school, the campus has been here for four. For that first year, they were part of Midlothian High School. It was freshman only the first year, and then uh, then they opened up as a high school the second year. Okay. Did y'all do things at Midlothian as far as promoting athletic training? We've had, we have had competitions, or for example, when we both go through our in service week in, in May, we will choose a day where we'll join the two groups together. And where they can, we can they can meet each other, and then we can also have a friendly competition, if possible. So, so that definitely promotes the program, right? Um, sure. So one of the things that um you guys keep coming back to is I talked to Luke Wilbanks. He's the owner of the Chick Fil A here. It's one of the most successful Chick Fil A's in the in the nation, uh, the one right here in Pasadena. And he talked about how for an interview they'll have an applicant but they don't do like a, they don't he doesn't take applications you have to come in and get the application fill it out and then they'll interview you and if they like you then they, they schedule you for another interview right and then that's with somebody different and what both of you are saying is you set that expectation and then within that if once you build a good solid core of highly vetted applicants then you're going to promote your program because you're going to look professional. They're going to be bought in, right? If I just pick up any any kid that says, oh, hey, I think I can do this, and then they end up getting kicked out of school or, you know, get caught doing drugs or uh, doing who knows what with somebody in the bathroom, right? Then obviously that looks bad for you and your program. You can't control everybody, but... Well, but that's it, us. We have 40 kids applying every year. We took five this year, and 
they our requirements are you I'll, I'll check with the counselors you have to make an 85 or higher average in jun, junior high is where we target them and then once we get that list of kids that are 85 or higher average we'll send them a letter with an application and then once if they return those to us with the proper recommendations we'll interview every single kid every, all 40 kids will interview them and it takes us a few days and how they how they dress in that interview how they talk to us or are they, are they gonna are they gonna buy in that's really the feeling I mean we can teach them whatever skills we want I don't I, I'm, I feel comfortable with that it's what kind of person are you are, are you gonna represent us well gotcha so so I think for any of us one of my questions was where where should we focus on for people that are new to the game and I think that's it because we keep we've kept coming back to that all right so any of us that are that are new that are just beginning to start your program then focus on on building a good group of kids and from there it'll grow so one of the things that I've done that I know is really kind of shown to the community is the mass CPR training um, to where we take the entire freshman class and we train them in CPR. And it's not just we show them a video or teach them one thing, but it's a whole morning, a whole three or four hours. Where we have uh, EMS and Life Flight, and, or well, not Life Flight, they were going to come. Uh, but the ambulance, the fire trucks, we have community members, uh, so we're teaching them conscious choking, unconscious choking, uh, CPR, how to use an AED, what to do when you call 911. They hear from somebody who has been saved by using CPR and an AED, um, and they get some free handouts from one of the community members and stuff like that. And so there's bringing lots of people in. I've had school board members here. I've had the, um, not the school board president, what's the superintendent? Superintendent came, you know, we've gotten grants and those kind of things. So that is something that I don't have to do, but it promotes me in the fact that, you know, I'm the athletic trainer, I'm training CPR, I know what to do. And so that looks good for Pasadena athletic training, Pasadena sports medicine, because of that really cool, really massive thing that we're doing. Again, it's no easy thing to put on, but it is well worth it as, as three or four times now I've heard, Hey, I use the CPR you taught to save some, you know, my cousin's life, my mom's life, that kind of thing. And so obviously those stories, which again, I've said every time I've talked to Chris is if I was better at promoting, then I would share those stories more with the with the school district or with the news and those kind of things and it would be even better at promoting but i'm just not that's not, well, I'm that, not good at really it. there's one person that you need to talk to or is your communicate the director of communications for your district and, and they have all those contacts and they will spin it in a good way for pasadena isd and make you look good and the district look good uh, so I, I think that's a important relationship to have is that communications director in your district because they're, they're going to help you out anytime our kids do anything i'll let them know and they're going to put it in the local paper, uh, or if our kids win, like the the um, quiz bowl, they're going to get recognized at a school board meeting. So any way you can you can contact that person and make a relationship, uh, the the better you are going to be promoting your, yourself or your program. Because I don't do much; I just let them know. They do all the work. Yeah, and that's the thing where I fall short is I don't let them know. Like I'm like I might tweet it out or something, but I need to send something to the communication director and then let it go from there. I just, I need to do that extra step. So one of the other things I got hey, talked about, go ahead, Greg. I was going to say, is Chris was talking about that, that, that level of communication. Another way that we strongly recommend, especially if you're new is to have a great communication level with your coordinators at the middle school. You know, a lot of our kids that apply for the program are normally freshmen. And so, you know, during the time, like right now, they're in eighth grade. We're not really sure how they are as a student and, how responsible they are and how well they work with others, what their grades are. So we have a great relationship with our middle school coordinators. And then we normally will find out one, who do they think will be a great applicant? And if they say, Hey, this would be a fantastic kid. Then we'll approach that kid and ask them if they're going to apply to the program. And, and then obviously the ones that apply to the program, which is kind of like what Chris said, we have quite a few that apply and we go lean on our coordinators and our principals for Walnut Grove or, you know, our, our middle school campuses. Um, or assistant principals, whoever we works with those kids, we will go and, and find out the details on how this child works with other students and how their grades are. And, you know, we can look at their tardies and their grades. And, but yeah, we just have a great relationship with our middle school campus coordinators and that really helps us out. Chris, what about you uh, as far as middle school? Yeah, let, uh, we have two middle schools that we are in charge of. There's four in our district, Pearland has two, we do two. So 
I have two, I have two associate athletic trainers and one of them is in charge of each of those junior highs. So Rod goes to one, Gretchen goes to the other each week. They evaluate injuries. So I let them communicate with those. That's pretty much their responsibility. Uh, talking to the counselors over there about the students or the principals or whatever, the, the coordinator, the coaches, uh, they they have that relationship with those people. So that's that's all on them. Uh, and then they they let me know. They've talked to those people. You know, they, they say that these kids are really good. These are not whatever. Good. So having a constant presence on the campus. Yeah, that was yeah. That's been one of our goals is to be seen, be seen in that administration area. Talk to the talk to those principals. Uh, and just be seen every day, and then call the parents and schedule whatever we need to schedule. Good, and I know we've talked multiple times, and that's one of your goals, what you're working towards, is having middle school, junior high, uh, athletic trainers in Paraline ISD, right? That is. It's a slow process. I, I, I know it's going to be that way because it's not it's not the norm. You know, there's not a whole lot of junior high athletic trainers out there, uh, and we want to kind of be ahead of that curve. We, we've always gotten support in Paraline ISD, uh, so we do have some support. We're just gonna it's just slow pushing it, getting that ball rolling. I think we're in the same boat. I think we'll get it. I just don't know when. I, I know it won't be, you know, next year. Uh, but we'll just keep pushing, keep pushing, and somebody will finally say yes. You're gonna get a constant presence, being intentional about your time, working towards a goal. So good, good. All right, Greg, you you mentioned you guys are kind of in the same boat. You guys are looking at um, doing middle school there, promoting your program. Right, correct. You know, our, our both of our principals would love to have an athletic trainer on campus. And I think what's happened is that, you know, every time there's an injury on campus, we're not there. They call us over, but they really, really want somebody on campus, and we're definitely in favor of it. Um, you know, it's just it takes the right people to get on board to make that happen, uh, to get two extra people on salary at their campus. Um, I'm hoping that would happen soon. But again, kind of like Chris said, it's it's in the works. Just not sure when it's going to happen. Hopefully, yeah, brand new position. That's hard to do. It's hard to convince all those people. The principals are the main ones. That they're the ones that can request it, and they're going to be those are the people that need to back you up at the principals at the junior high, for sure. Unfortunately, you know, it it takes usually a, something wrong or something bad to happen on campus before um, they make that decision. That's true. Uh, trying to be like Chris and be proactive, and let's get somebody there now. Uh, One of the other things I mentioned at the beginning, the scavenger hunt that we're currently doing, um, it was pretty cool for me. We started it several years ago. We've done it ever since. The kids, our kids really look forward to it. And just, I think, in the last two years, we've started using Instagram and Twitter. And so I actually had somebody that goes to church with me say, hey, I, hey, I saw uh, so-and-so doing the scavenger hunt because they saw their Instagram post and they're friends with them, and, but they're, they don't even go to this school. They're outside of the school. And so it was really cool because I'm building support just you know further than what my instagram or my twitter because if i just had them all sent to me and i posted them well that's only one but again the grassroots effort so whenever we first started it actually had a lot to do with like football what was going on like who scored a touchdown in the game last night or something like that um but i've since through our conversations i've grown and and you know i've included what are the domains of athletic training have a teacher talk about what an athletic trainer is, a student talk about what an athletic trainer is, um, show your skills, tape somebody's thumb, somebody's wrist, uh, splint somebody's arm, use a foam roller, teach somebody about CPR, where, you know, find out where all the ADs these are and, and how to use them, teach somebody about that. And so the teachers are seeing, you know, these kids, I sent out the list of the teachers saying, this is what they're supposed to do. These are the kids. Um, you know, if you can allow them to then then do so. But, it's really cool because oh, the whole school gets to see it. And then, you know, everybody outside that's in their social media uh, gets to see it as well. So for me, you know, I've posted that on, on the secondary school's Facebook and I can share that with anybody that emails. And I think I have the list here in the show notes. Uh, but that's one really cool thing that, that I, we have done here at Pasadena. So um, what are some of the other things that you guys have done that worked well, but maybe weren't the best? making the videos oh. on NET. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For National Athletic Training Month, yeah. videos, every year our kids say, let's do one, let's do one. And they write like two lines, and that's it. Or what, yeah. well, even I would try to get the video tech people at our school involved, and they, our kids couldn't come up with the right thing. So video tech had to 
figure something out and they did a little commercial thing with nobody was speaking. So <laughs> I'm with y'all. The kids always want to do videos, but they never follow through. We did it one year uh, when the UTSA opened up in, in Arlington. Um, we did our UTA opened up in Arlington uh, that they had a contest for a video presentation for NATA and uh, our actually school won the, the contest, which was fantastic. It was great. And we use that video then to promote the applications or, you know, the applicants uh, for the following year. And it worked out great. But, you know, some kids put effort into it and, and some of them might embarrass you because they don't put any effort into yeah, it. Yeah, right. I know one right. thing that we've done um, that we have fun with, it would, and it sounds like be a similar situation to you guys in Midlothian, is uh, us in Pearland. And we, uh, we do a competition every year with those guys. We got a wrestling belt made. And during the, our football game when we play each other, we have a competition on the field where uh who can get the referees water first uh the three uh, the three officials that are in the middle and the, and the head official in the white hat he's worth two points and the other two guys are worth one point and whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins this wrestling belt so uh that's been kind of fun for us a little friendly competition i have to warn the officials before the game hey um i just want to warn you that there's going to be people running full speed at you uh, <laughs> During <laughs> during timeouts, right, and and, the, and the, the kids know they have to go to the right side. So you know, one guy is going to this the back of somebody to the right, and somebody else is coming to the front side, and they have to wait, especially for the head official, for him to make the call because they'll be there before he's he's making a signal to the booth. Uh, we funny. have all these rules. It's it's amazing. It's fun. Our kids have a great time doing that. Hey Chris, we played DeSoto one one year, and we had a contest with that. And we were beating DeSoto to this one timeout, and the DeSoto kid threw his squeeze bottle, hit the official. <laughs> oh, he was, no. He's like, nobody, y'all just stay away from me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> All right. So, that again, that's a great thing because people get excited. You got somebody in the stands counting, right? You have somebody. Uh, uh, we we do. Score. We have a, we have a few people uh, keeping count for us. And then and we, there's a – I'll say neutral. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we did win this, this past year. So, uh, I guess that's good. Um, and then we'll have, uh, I have always, I always have people asking me what is going on with these guys running down there. Uh, and so we will explain the whole story. Um, and so it's fun. All right. Um, I know Jesse Lopez, he just commented here. He's watching. They, they made a commercial. They had the, um, the school, I video tech people come out and they made a commercial about this, just promoting the program, showing that, you know, they have a really nice trainer, athletic training room. So they have that going on there. And then they have that to send out to the middle schools to, to promote their program as well. So maybe if you're really good with video or making those Instagram stories, you do that. Maybe uh, if you have an IT program or, or video program, that's really good, then you can have them as well come out and that would be a, another good idea. Um, Anything else? Any any other ideas for promoting your program? I think the easiest thing, or one of the easiest things, is uh, social media. If if your school district allows it, you know all the all the forms of social media, have an account and post things on there. And I think we we don't do a, a, as good of job as I'd like. I guess posting things out there, uh, we do during March. But other than that, I try to I try to do things when our students do stuff. But a lot of times I forget. I guess it's up to our kids to, they're on it all the time. So maybe I should have them just take charge of that, but I'm scared to, to give them our accounts. <laughs> kind of like yeah. what you talked about in the beginning, this uh, questionable social media post. So yeah. Uh, hey. Actually on Hootsuite, if you use that, they can create posts and then they have to be approved by you or something like that. I'm not, I, I don't, I haven't done that process, but I know that, um, that's one of the ways that you could possibly do that is if you assign them as a, like a team member, Okay. then those kids can use that tool as like online software. And then, then you have to approve it or something like that. So oh, I like that. that. I'm going to write that down. Hoot right now. Hoot Suite. So it's H O O T S U I T E hootsuite.com. So I use it to schedule like the social media posts for the podcast or like the giveaways, that kind of thing. And so I can actually create one thing and it'll post it across several different platforms uh, they have a free plan and then like a paid plan 
And so just, just check it out and see what works for you. But I'm pretty sure it would allow you to do that, allowing the kids to create it and then you just approve it. So. Um, going back to like other things that you can do to promote your program for us, anytime our school has a competition, we try to, or I try to encourage our student athletic trainers as a group to compete. So if we do like a, they do like a homecoming banner competition or, um, I don't know, like a homecoming float or anything that the school puts on, like if you can raise the most, I don't know, canned food or whatever. Um, it's kind of an easy way to kind of just like as a group, let's do something and um, be one of a few of them. So yeah, I mean, if, nice. if, if it's open to any elective with groups, whether it be choir, band, ag, we want our kids involved in it and get out there and, and whether it's create a banner or whatever the contest may be, we want our kids out there. That way they're in the spotlight too with everybody else. Absolutely. Yeah. I think you guys have kind of covered that um, as far as engaging in the competitions or, or being part of what's at the school. Like you said, uh, the banners, the doors, the decorating. There's something else you guys said earlier too. Um, oh, part of pep rallies. You know, like you can have your kids, hey, the football is having a pep rally. These kids have been working football all year. They need to be a part of it, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the football coaches are usually just worried about football and then cheerleaders and then volleyball. And so you just say, hey, I'm pulling my kids out. They're going to be part of the pep rally as well. They're going to be dressed just like you said. You know, here's the expectation. You're going to, if you're not dressed correctly, you're not going, uh, and that kind of thing. So that's that's an easy way for them to be a part of that, that excitement, that crowd. And people are saying, oh, hey, who who are those kids that are standing back there with? And they're not dressed like football, but they are with football. And so again, it, it promotes what you're doing to the student body. So good. Let me write right. that down before I forget. Oh, Jeremy, I was also going to tell you that another way we promote our kids to the community is with our mass physicals. Um, we'll go through, you know, 500 kids in that one day. And with parents, it's it's a quite a bit of people that's that comes through our in our school. And so we'll have our kids dressed. And although they're not working per se, but, you know, they're helping directing traffic to helping out a coach with vision or whatever the fact is. But they're all dressed appropriately and the, so the parents that come in there they they know who they are and they get recognized that way as you know as being a student or a student aid or a student trainer or however you want to call it right and we do, we do this we do the same thing and then we'll do the call out because we have a call out system so we'll call out or email out or whatever it is some parents don't want that but we're we're, we're putting it in their face for them and we're, we're hosting this and most of the time we do a, a free ekg and believe it or not, only half the parents take advantage of that. We did that last year as well. That was really awesome. <clears throat> yeah, I think the the physicals is another, like you said, another option. As long as you're doing, you're doing the call out, the emails, you know, the kids are knowing, hey, there's somebody there at the school. They may not know that we're athletic trainers, but there's somebody there at the school that's providing medical care for my kid that at least gives them an idea. And so, uh, you know, if that, that is approved by your school district, all that other stuff. But yeah, having your having your students there to be part of the program, can, uh, directing traffic or uh, looking professional, that's another easy way to promote your program to the school and to the community. What else you guys got? It sounds like the Chris's program and our pro program are very similar. Similar yeah. in blue and uh... yeah. expectations. Yeah, that's it. Promoting to your school, I think, is easy. You know, half the students are at, at our school. Almost half the students are athletes. So pretty much all those kids know what we do. Uh, the other students, um, it's hard. It's hard to reach those kids to let them know. I think most of most of the stuff that we promote is geared towards community. Uh, we do have in our cafeteria uh, TVs up that plays a like a PowerPoint slide during lunch. So if we have things going on, sometimes I'll submit those pictures or a PowerPoint slide with that information. Gotcha. So I was thinking about during National Athletic Training Month having, um, you know, we have we sell like Gatorade, uh, protein shakes, protein bars, that kind of stuff. So thinking about having like a package where maybe it was like one case of the Gatorade shakes. And so the athlete that came up with the best video describing what an athletic trainer does, they'll win that pack of protein shakes because you know they're the ones that always want those things so what are your thoughts about that chris that's good i like it i mean anything where you can 
you can get kids to get involved in, in promoting our, us or our profession, I think that's that's excellent. Yeah, so maybe I'll have to f follow up with that idea. So I'm thinking it's something to be easy enough to do, get somebody else to do most of the work to where I just have to give them a prize. So <laughs> good, good. So if I have nothing else, then I've given you an idea for, for March, right? Yeah. What do you guys do? You, Jeremy, do you do anything with the other schools in Pasadena? Um, we, we've done field trips before. A lot of times when we go on a field trip, like I'll call one of those schools, Hey, here's where I want to go. If you guys get the bus, I'll, I'll take care of everything else. You know, the, all the, whatever. Um, but as far as we don't have any sort of competitions, we, so I, I guess other than if we do like a special trip or jihads together, then no. Okay. Anything else? I don't know on that. No? Sounds like you don't need to do lock-ins. Oh, I don't know. That sounds awful, really. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell Casey, 10 o'clock. Let's just end yes, it. Yes, absolutely. Oh, no, we got to go to 6. You know what, though? It is miserable, but the kids love it, and it's totally worth it because every year they're talking about it, and and they'll they'll never forget that moment. Like they'll, They won't forget that night. So I won't it's, either. It's worth it. <laughs> It's we, worth it for them. We do something similar, but we're out of there by nine or ten o'clock. There you go. So, See. And we and we get together <laughs> with um, apparently I know we'll they come over to our school or we'll go to theirs. We'll kind of alternate years. And several years ago, we were renting laser tag guns, and then I ended up saying I can just buy them for the same amount. So I bought laser two dozen laser tag guns, and so did Pearland. So they'll bring their guns over. I'll have the whole school. We'll play. We have three floors, so we play laser tag in the whole building oh uh, versus God. each other versus boys versus girls or whatever it is. Um, so that's another competition we do, and we get together. But before that, like this year, we did a taping lab with them, and it's it's really our week before before football starts where we're kind of like an in-service week for our students. And that last day is when we do laser tag with Parentland. Yeah, Chris has talked multiple times on here or at like even at the Sports Medicine Update, and he's included those different ideas. So like I said at the beginning, he's he's who I would call the guru of promoting your program, right? And he's, yeah, he's got lots of ideas. Uh, so I I know we've tried to do stuff to where we could get groups together, but we just we just haven't made it happen here in Pasadena uh, yet. Right. So, all right, Chris, if somebody wants to get a hold of you, find out more, they can they can email me. Uh, are you gonna put my email on there? Yep. Or you haven't? It? It's Shattuck C at parlandisd dot org. Yep. Or in my I guess my Twitter handle is at fabu underscore at. All right. So if you want to get a hold of Chris, you can follow him there on on Twitter. You can I know he's in the secondary schools Facebook group, but I talk about a lot. Um, you can email him and say, hey, can you send me more information about uh, about the the timeout belt or about your plywood thing. And then he's good about responding. And like I said, he's got lots of, lots of ideas and very willing to help. All right, Greg, Casey, someone wants to get a hold of you. Best way. Uh, probably email. Um, or school email. Mine is C A S E Y underscore L O U G E E D at M I S D dot G S. Again, I have that in the show notes here, Greg. Yours is same thing, email. Same as mine, yes. All right, Greg, Greg underscore Greg at MISD dot GS. All right, spell your last name. Spell G O E R I G. Good. I'm, I misspelled it somewhere in the show notes, and so I wanted to make sure I had it right on the email. Uh, I think I just kept switching the E and the I. But all right, so Greg and Casey Midlothian, uh, they've got some great ideas. You can find out about lock in, some of the activities you can do. Chris has got. Plenty of ideas from years of experience there. If you want to find out more about promoting your program, again, I think the biggest thing that they've said that they came back to was start with the basics, build a solid, consistent foundation, and from there, your program will grow. They'll promote, their parents will promote. Uh, you'll be able to get good good kids in who, who produce good results, right? So if you, if you can, then start there. Right. Uh, also, Jamie Woodall, I mentioned earlier, she has given me the link for the um, marketing communications resources. And so there's the PR style book, which is pretty cool. It's got 
like a, a list of things you can do and it has like a budget. So it has like, you know, like the restaurants have the $1, $2, $3 sign. And so it tells you how much it costs. And I think the difficulty level on there as well. And if you, so it's kind of like a catalog, you can go through and say, okay, well, I've got one week and I've got 10 bucks. What can I do? And that'll help you there. So in the show notes, again, this is sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash student body. I've got links to both of those. Uh, and Jamie said it was perfectly okay to share. So you don't have to be a member of the NATA to, to view those. And again, public relations is dealing with the public and not uh, dealing with like athletics or whatever it is, but it's dealing with the people who are outside of, of your program. So again, great ideas from, from these guys here. Again, sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash student body. I am Jeremy Jackson. So if you want to get a hold of me, go to the show notes. I got to add a link to it there. Um, anything else, Chris? No, I, I think that's that's pretty good, especially if you if you don't know what to do. Just yeah, start start basic. Get people to buy into your program. And, and then if they're excited about it, the other people are going to be excited about it too. Yep. There you go. And then Greg, Casey, any last thoughts? No, I mean, I, I, you know, one of our reasons as we're in the profession is to take care of the injured athlete, but also, you know, we want to love on those student trainers and kind of mold them into a great care, a great person as they go through the, the years of high school and, you know, to get something out of it. Yep. They may not be a, an athletic trainer when they get out, but they'll remember the time and the skills right. they'll remember for the rest of their life. So. Again, sportsmedicinebroadcast.com slash student body for Jeremy Jackson, Chris Shattuck, Greg Gorig, and Casey Loheed. That is a wrap.